Hello, welcome to my channel, welcome to my garage. This is Rex Garage and we're going to start the assembly of the Honda CBR1000 from Tamiya. We're going to start off with uh, step number one, assembly of the engine. And it's pretty simple to do. You just put that pin in there like so. And then on this side here, put it in like that. There we go. Fits in like so. Uh, this piece Yep, wrong way around. Goes in here like that. It's a little fiddly to get in. There we go. Oh, snaps right into place. And then this piece rolls right into place like that. And then you've got your, your engine all completed. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and paint this up. Uh, we'll come back and uh, show you what it looks like. I'm going to see if I can't show you on video how I'm doing the chain. Uh, you can see that I've already got uh about three or four of the pins into the template i'm going to see if i can't show you what i'm doing uh, the first thing that i do is i take my pin vise and drop it in a little bit of thin cement and i'm going to put it into that hole that's vacant i don't know if i can do this here so hold on a minute there put a little bit of glue where, where is it? glue there we go onto that hole there and I'm going to take my screwdriver let's see if I can get that on camera I take my screwdriver and I've got a a pin dangling from the screwdriver you probably can't see it but there's a little pin dangling from the screwdriver I'm going to um, guide that into that hole unfortunately I don't know if I can do this on camera but we'll see so there's my if you can see it or not I don't know if you can see it but there's a little pin get that in, in focus a little bit now well, it doesn't look like I can but it's dangling there that you can see and it's going to go into that hole let's see what we can do I'm going to move this a little bit closer so that I can see this there we go and now you can see that the pin is right there in in that hole so there are the pins that I've already put in and I'm going to see if I can get you a better view of this. So uh, I'm going to zoom out a little bit and do another view of this. And if I turn this on its edge, you can now see that I've got the pins in there and they're all nice and straight. So that's how I'm doing it. I've taken just a little dab, just the, the tiniest amount of dab of, of uh, super glue, a thin cement super thin cement and I just put a little dab right there in the hole so okay I just don't have the camera or the cameras to do this justice so you can see exactly what I'm doing step by step but hopefully you get the gist of the idea um, all I do is is that I take a little bit of thin super glue and I dab it onto the hole where I want the pin to go and uh, these pins are, are magnetic so I take my my uh, magnetic screwdriver it's a Phillips head and I dangle the pin at the end of the point of the uh, the screwdriver and then I guide it into the hole and then I wait for the glue to dry and then I go on to the next pin and this process for me seems to be working you can see that those pins are straight there's no glue glops and this is starting to become a very nice and neat uh, chain that uh, is going to be constructed. And I'm doing this uh, in between uh, steps on the Honda. And hopefully when it's all done, this will go on the Honda. But I just wanted to show you what I've been doing in between steps and working on the chain. So that's the process. Hopefully if you guys are building this chain and constructing it, um, hopefully this uh, method that I'm doing uh, will help you out. And so far it's working just fine. So let's see what happens at the end of this build and how this chain comes out. Okay, here's the engine at the end of step number five. Very detailed. Painted in the colors that are called for in the instructions. All very detailed piece right here. And a couple of things I do want to point out to you though. Uh, this part right here, hopefully you can see it on the, on the camera. This one piece right here, very fragile. You can break it off the engine or actually break probably this arm right here. So be very careful with this piece right here because you can break it. Um, 
And then um, we also have uh, directional parts. Uh, these right here need to go in a specific direction. So pay close attention to the instructions. You're going to need your tweezers to put those on. And then we have uh, some decals. Uh, this decal here goes around, I believe this is the oil filter. This, this bottom decal is one long decal. It goes all the way around the engine. And then you have uh, the top there. So pay uh, close attention to the instructions on the direction on how that decal should go on. And, um, but that's the engine as it is right now. It's uh, step number five. So it went on pretty well, pretty simple. Um, nothing, all the parts went on very, very, um, easy and, and tight. There's another real fragile part right here that you need to be aware of. I don't know if the camera can see it or not, but this little part right here, very, very fragile. You can break that off. And right behind it is a decal that you need to put on right there in that little tiny corner. Obviously you want to put the decal on before you put the hose on and before you put this little part on right there. But um, that's the engine as it is as it sits right now. Very detailed. That brings us up to uh, step number six and seven where we work on the, the frame. And the frame is really not that hard. Uh, Tammy has actually done most of the work for us. All we have to do is put a little, a couple little tiny parts in that goes in like that and then it marries up to its other half right here there it goes and self aligns itself right up to here get that piece in there like so and you've got yourself um, a frame so I'm going to whoops I'm going to go ahead and um, sand this down uh, glue it paint it and uh, get it onto the bike and then we'll also be putting the engine into the bike as well i'll be doing that off camera but um, that's where we're at right now so let me go ahead and get this assembled uh, painted and we'll come back and uh, show you what it looks like okay here is the frame all assembled and painted uh, in the metallic black and the semi-gloss at the end there so that is the frame right there and we also have a couple of uh, decals that we need to put on uh, this is just a little tiny round decal here. Uh, the decal says push, so it's some sort of a button that uh, you push on the bike for whatever reason. And then you also, I believe that's just the VIN number, the other decal there. Now there is a couple things I wanted to point out on the assembly of the, of the frame. Um, this right here, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. This piece right here, it goes right into the center of the bike or excuse me, in the center of the frame, and that's this piece right here. Don't know if you can see it or not. Goes in right, right in through here. That's that's the piece right there, and that's the top right there. Um, it didn't need any glue. It just snaps right in, and uh, the only part that you need to really paint is the top part. You don't really need to paint the entire uh, piece right there because it's going to be completely hidden anyway uh, within the frame and the bike. And one thing I wanted to point out, and bring out the instructions is this part right here and there's two of them you have to put one on the left and you have to put one bring it over here on the right up here okay I have no idea why Tamiya did that because it's actually on the inside of the frame it's actually located inside here and you'll never ever see them I don't know what purpose they serve I have no idea why we had to have a separate piece to fill in this little gap hole that's in in the frame. It makes absolutely no sense to me. So, um, you know, I put it in there. Uh, I didn't paint it or anything because I, I, I felt, you know, why? So it's just in there, bare plastic. It's in there. It's glued in. And you'll never, ever, ever see it because it's, uh, it's going to be completely buried in the... Uh, in the frame. So that was really weird that uh, Tamiya did that. But um, the next thing that we need to do is to uh, put the engine into the frame of the bike. And that goes in just like this. So it moves in like that and snaps into place. 
and that is the engine into the frame. It takes about four screws to get that in. So I'll get that all screwed in and show you what it looks like um, afterwards. And then that brings us down to uh, step number nine, where uh, we do the, uh, the fender. And that's uh, all painted up. And we have a couple of sub-assemblies that we need to uh, put on, as uh, well as a couple of uh, hoses. Uh, this just uh, gets glued in like that. And um, then, of course, we have the, uh, the, the lights in there. Uh, I didn't use the paint that was called for in the kit. I used um, Vallejo Extreme uh, Chrome and just dipped uh, the end of a toothpick and uh, made those little dots in there. There's little recesses where that goes in. And uh, that, so that turned out uh, perfectly. So I just used uh, Extreme Chrome for that. Moving on to, uh, to the next page here. On uh, step number 10, that's when we actually attach the fender to the frame. And that will go on just like that. And that just kind of snaps into place onto the frame. It doesn't need any gluing. And uh, then that will take us basically down to step number 12. I'm going to skip uh, step number 11. Uh, this is just the, the, the stand for the bike. Nothing special about that. Uh, this is then in step 12 when we get into the suspension. And then we get into the swing arm on uh, 13, right up here on step 13. And step 14, we come up to the famous chain. And this is where I'm at on building the metal chain. And you can see that it looks like my technique that I outlined earlier appears to be working because all those pins are in and they're basically all nice and straight and ready to go. I've done a couple of test, test fits for the uh, gear here in the back that uh, is going to go in and it appears that it's going to go in just fine. You can tell that I'm actually on the home stretch. I'm getting the rest of those pins in, but uh, that's where we're at on the chain. Hopefully, uh, this is going to work out where we're going to have a really nice metal chain for the bike. So let me get all these uh, parts all assembled and uh, and attached to the frame and um, show you what that looks like, and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, here is the engine attached to the frame of the bike. Went in without any problems. And again, it goes on with uh, four screws. There are two different size screws, so pay attention to the, uh, to the size of the screws that uh, it's calling for. Uh, the screws back here are longer than the screw for these, so uh, pay attention to that. And um, otherwise, uh, the engine went in just fine. And then we also have the, the fender that went in, and we have the hoses that, the, uh, that calls for it to have in, on the fender, so, and also the lights. So that is the uh, is the engine in the frame of the bike okay so that now brings us up to uh step number 12 again i'm not going to do step 11 uh, or i'm going to do it uh later on but i'm not going to really talk about it it's just a the stand for the bike uh so we're up to uh, step number 12 you have a whole bunch of tiny little parts uh for this step and um essentially what you're going to need to do now i've already painted these the colors that they need to be I just haven't glued them yet. And uh, there's two poly caps that you need to have into this, uh, these pieces here. And they just kind of just fit together. Whoops. Uh, bring that back up again. Just like so. Oh, the other way around. There we go. So they just got kind of match up just like that. And uh, get that glued in with the, with the poly caps. Uh, this right here is pretty simple to do as well. Uh, you take your pin. And then you take uh, this part right here, and the pin just goes into the hole of this part here. And then you take this part. Now there is a square hole here. I don't know if you can see it on camera. That's a square hole. And there is a kind of a square lug or a square um, a piece right there, like a ledge uh, going across the hole there. That kind of matches up to the square hole on here. And you just Put that in and you know you got it in there right when you can't turn that so now that's on 
Now, if you're doing the uh, detail up part set for the uh, for the ionized forks, the fork set, in this set here, uh, they give you a spring that's already uh, pre-painted to the color that it calls for, and they give you a metal ionized metal uh, part here for the oil filter. So the only thing you have to do is put the decal on that it calls for, and then you'll have yourself a um, you know a working suspension. But this will go on right like that. Put the two parts together, and you're good to go. Uh, then up here, I've already painted and assembled uh, part of the swing arm assembly. And uh, you have this piece right here. Now there is a, uh, a hole here. And there is uh, this slot right here. Okay. And on the back of this piece, there is a lug, which is right here. Uh, so what you do is, is that... Um, you take this uh, this piece, you put it in two, through the hole, whoops, put it in through the hole, this way, and then you match that lug up to the hole that I showed you just a moment ago, and it just snaps right into place. Very simple. Uh, then you take your, your, uh, your arms here, and uh, you screw those in to the, uh, to this, uh, to this part of the uh, swing arm assembly. They go in here on either side. And then you attach your um, your spring assembly right up into there. There is a decal that goes on here. And there's also a decal that you'll find in step number 14 that goes in around about in this area somewhere uh, that you need to put on this piece as well. But uh, those are the parts that we need to do in steps 13, uh, 12 and 13. And that is the engine on the uh, the frame of the bike so let me go ahead and get all of these parts right here all assembled uh, attach it to the uh, swing assembly and uh, we'll go on to the next step okay our swing arm assembly has been completed or partially completed anyway we have the uh, shock absorber for lack of a better term is now attached to the swing arm assembly and that just kind of moves up and down just like that we have our oil filter attached and of course, we've got the, the decal on that as well. Uh, we have this piece here, and there are two lugs on the back of this piece, here and here. And that just matches up to the two holes that you have on the swing arm assembly. That goes on just like so, and that gets attached. And then we have our metal chain that we've completed. And uh, we also had, had to cut the metal chain just as the plastic part is has been cut and we have this piece here which is also called for in the instructions to attach to the plastic uh, chain but for the metal chain it just goes in the back like so and then snapped into place just like that then you take your metal chain you thread it through the opening here and then this piece there's a lug back here whoops fell off uh, there's a lug back here where this piece here fits right into that lug in the back just like so and then you're going to have your metal chain then on your swing arm assembly then the swing arm assembly itself turn it around this way gets attached to the frame of the bike now this piece here this hole right here a little bit of an attachment hole there is going to go between these two parts right here and that's going to get screwed in something like that okay and then this whole uh, swing arm assembly gets attached with the chain on the uh, on the frame of the bike and then that's how all these pieces are going to get attached to this piece here and then that moves us on to our next uh, step which would be back here which would be uh, step number 15 where we start working on the tire the wheel, the brake, uh, disc, and the and the caliper. The disc I'm going to be making out of metal, which will come from this detail upset. I've already worked on the tires to get rid of the seam line, so you can see that is all cleaned up. And then uh, going all th through these uh, other steps between uh, step uh, 16 
all the way through to 19 is where we actually complete the assembly of the wheel to the frame of the bike with a few detail parts, which would then bring us up to the exhaust. So let me get all this um, completed and assembled and come back, show you what all that uh, looks like, and then we'll start working on the exhaust. Okay, here is the rear wheel attached to the frame of the bike. I uh, went in basically without any real problems uh, at all. Uh, you have to uh, align this assembly up so that uh, it aligns up to this hole here. And then, of course, you've got this right down here. I don't know if the camera can see it or not, but uh, you need to attach the spring assembly to the frame of the bike right there. So you need to align that up. And then uh, also, too, on the other side, you also have that hole right here, this screw hole here. This whole assembly basically is, is put together by three screws. You have one long screw that runs the length from here all the way across to here. And one of the problems that I had uh, was there is a sleeve that goes into the frame of the bike right there. It's a screw sleeve. That took a little bit of uh, time to get in because it's got to be aligned properly from this, uh, from the frame onto the rear wheel assembly. And then also too, so that the screw from the back, as it goes through the back here, all the way across into that, uh, into that sleeve. So it took a little bit of time, but uh, it can be done, obviously. Uh, just got to take your time on it and get everything all aligned. And I think aligning up all those points simultaneously, that's where the difficulty really lies. But other than that, went in just fine without any real problems. Now, I did go ahead and uh, attach a couple of more parts to this. Uh, this part right here I attached, and it has a couple of hoses that you need to attach. So there's a hose here on the back of the, uh, of the, of the fender area runs along this way and that gets attached to this lug. And then way back when we were assembling the fender, this piece here has a hose coming out and that gets attached to another lug right next to it. And then this piece right here, this hose right here, that runs along here and it gets attached to a lug behind that piece right there. Uh, the other hoses that you have is from here to here and then from here runs all the way around and attaches to the back of this piece right there. Uh, the one thing I have uh, seen on this kit though, uh, concerning hoses, is that the lengths that are called for in the kit are a little bit longer than what you need. Uh, for example, I had to cut down quite a bit of the hose from here to here, as well as cut down this hose a little bit to um, uh, fit in nice and neatly. But other than that, had absolutely no problem on getting that uh, rear assembly onto the frame of the bike. And that brings us up to uh, stage number 20 when we start working on the on the exhaust pipes. As you can see here, I've got uh, this partially already glued and partially painted. I'm still working on the paint job as well as we have some additional parts that we need to attach and paint. And then once that is all done, it gets attached to the bike kind of sort of like this goes into those holes right there kind of sort of like that and once that is in kind of like self aligns itself just like that where you attach uh, screw it in from uh, you know, right there and then once the muffler is on that it gets attached right there so i need to get this all painted up and uh, weather it and attach to the bike and then that will bring us up to uh, step number 24. So let me get all that done, uh, painted, attached uh, to the bike, and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, here is the muffler on the frame of the bike. Went in without any real problems. Uh, it does go into these uh, four holes up into here. It is a tight fit, so um, it's going to take a little bit of effort to get them in. Be very careful of this piece right here because you can break it as you're putting in the muffler. So be very, very careful of that. Uh, this piece will later go into the uh, radiator. That is on the next step. Um, once that is uh, up uh, installed, this then will go into the configuration that it needs to go into. There is a screw right here that uh, you need to screw into the frame to secure it. 
and also a screw right up in here. Uh, you'll notice I have done some uh, modifications to it. I did uh, use a, uh, some clear yellow and clear blue for the uh, heat treatment of the uh, of the exhaust system. I put it, uh, that in a couple of uh, different areas. Didn't do too much on it because most of this is going to be hidden anyway once the radiator and the cows are on. This area is going to be all covered up. Um, but I did put some um, details up and through here. I also used a little bit of black panel liner to bring out more of the detail of the, uh, of the part. Uh, the decal right up in here is not called for in the in the instructions. So different decals called for in the instructions. I'm going off of the uh, color insert that comes with the kit. So I use the decal that um, is on this color insert. The decal that is uh, called for in the kit, I put that on the back of the, of the muffler and it's right back in through here. That's why I put that decal. But uh, that's the uh, that's the muffler on, on the frame of the bike. Now, one thing I want to also point out, too, is right in the center here, there is one hose that has not been attached yet. Okay, don't worry about that. That will be attached to a part further on into the kit. So that's basically that hose and this hose are the two hoses that we haven't uh, attached yet. So don't worry about that. Um, but uh, that is the uh, muffler on the uh, on the bike so far and that brings us up to put this over here uh, to the assembly of the radiator i uh, got these two pieces right here painted to the uh, color that they called for i'm still working on the uh, the coloring of uh, this piece here and also working on this right here i am going to be adding some metal details to this that was called for in the detail upset so let me go ahead and get all this uh, painted and assembled and put that onto the bike. Go on to the next step and show you what all that looks like. Okay, the radiator is now on the bike and it is secured in this, these two posts right here and here. And you also want to make sure after it's been um, secured in, you want to make sure you get this piece in first. Very fragile piece that we've been uh, so concerned about ever since we uh, first installed the uh, the part and that goes into this uh, part of the radiator right there Then you turn it over and then you've got an existing hose that you've had on the bike this one right here it glues in right in this spot right there and uh, Two more parts uh, this little fiddly part right here glues into the uh, to this part of the radiator there and way in the back. I don't know if you can see it or not, but way in the back of the bike is where it's also secured. Now, this piece here, this piece here does not go all the way into the lug of this piece here. Um, no, I thought maybe the hole was too small. Uh, for the lug that's on this piece. So I, I enlarged the hole. That wasn't the problem. It just does not go all the way in. And I think it's made not to go all the way in um, because in the instructions, they do tell you to paint that lug on that piece. So I think it's just supposed to kind of sort of sit there on the hole that's in this piece right here and just glue that in. But that's that piece in. And then you have a stabilizing bar right here. And then you have an additional hose that needs to go in right here. But that's the uh, radiator on the bike. Now I've also added a couple of um, uh, details to it. I did add the metal grills on the radiator on the front and the back, even though you're not going to be able to see them on the back because they're all hidden uh, from the uh, from the frame, all the parts down here, but there's metal parts back in there. So this is a, a front and back piece. And uh, we also have a decal that goes on the uh, radiator cap like that. So, but that's the, um, the radiator on the bike. And I'm gonna move this away a little bit. And that brings us up to stage number 26. And I've already started working on that. This is the headlights, actually, and uh, these are uh, just sitting here drying, drying up. Uh, you do have to mask off the clear part of the headlight, 
and which I have already done and for painting. That's what these are right here. They're all just waiting to be, uh, waiting to dry. And then we also have this, these parts right here. So uh, let me get these um, assembled and glued into the bike and I'll show you what that looks like. And then after that, we move on to uh, the front wheel. Uh, but that is, bring the bike over again. But that is the radiator on the frame of the bike. So let me get those other parts glued and installed on the frame and then we can go on to the next stage. Okay, now let's see if we can't get these lenses in. So we have this piece here and then we're going to take a clear part. Not the wrong one. This piece here and you're going to match it up to the configuration of that of that piece there. So this should just kind of like plop into place just like that. Okay, plop into place just like that. I'm going to take a little bit of micro crystal clear. I use this all the time for clear parts because it dries clear and it does not frost up. Just needed just a little bit. Just enough to try to keep it in place. Now it goes on white, but it dries clear. So we'll get our piece again. Get around this way. Oops. Come on, we need to get around that way. There we go. And we plop that right into place, just like that. And that's going to dry clear, and then that's what it looks like on the other side. So that piece is in, and we'll do the same thing on the other one. Take this piece here. Um, in that configuration, get a little bit of micro crystal clear, since we already know how this goes on. Here we go, it's in focus. Oops. Just a little bit in the area where it's supposed to go. So right in through here, it's a very, very tiny piece. Okay. Now we take our clear part and we do the same thing that we did the last time. We just kind of plop it right in. Oops. Try that, try that again. There it goes. Kind of like falls right into place, just like that. And there it is on the other side. Okay, so I'm going to let these dry and then we'll attach them to, uh, to this piece right here. So let me come back and um, we'll go through the process of attaching these two pieces onto this piece as soon as these uh, have a time to dry. Okay, so our plastic piece has had time to dry overnight, and you can see that there's no frosting or any sign of the glue. So the crystal clear, the micro crystal clear that we used yesterday worked out perfectly. So now we can go ahead and attach this light to this piece here. Now there's three contacts that you need to align up. Uh, the large lug on this piece here lines up to the large hole here. And then the other piece on the opposite corner right here is going to line up to this hole here. And then there's a contact um, spot right there that the light needs to rest on. So you take your piece and you line it up like that, making sure that the smaller lug is in that hole. And then you press down and you can feel it go in. And that holds it in pretty good. It's not going to fall out. So I'm not going to put any glue on that. It basically holds on it to its own. And then you take your light cover. Oops, the other way around. And you put your light cover on. Okay. Now, once the light covers are on and everything else, take your bike. And there are some contact points that you need to line up. You need to line up this here and you need to line this up over here and then there's a protruding plastic part right here that you need to line up that's going to go uh, through the little slot 
that's on this uh, bar that goes across. So you're going to line it up something like that. Okay, so these two pieces here are going to line up to these two holes right there. And they're going to, it's going to snap right on in. And then on the opposite side, you have the hole for the screw. That, see that, that half moon hole right there? It's going to go right over that hole right there, that screw hole, and then you can uh, secure it in. So that's how that piece is going to go on. Um, so let me go ahead and get all this assembled, uh, put it on the bike, and we'll come back and I'll show you what that looks like, and then we can go on to our next step. Okay, we got the lights on the bike, and without any real problems. And again, the screws that you need to screw in is right there. I don't know if you can see that or not, there is a screw there. And then on the other side, you also have another screw, right? See if I get that in focus, right there. And then it clips on that little protruding um, tab that we pointed out earlier. I don't know if you can see it or not, but that little protruding tab is right there. It goes between those two other lugs right there on that um, on that bar. One thing I do want to point out, though, is that the additional part that you have to uh, put in is this part right here, one with the two uh, tabs uh, sticking out on on the side. That is very very tricky. It's very delicate. You can break these tabs off when you're uh, installing it because it's a very tight fit. It just clips into that to that tab right there. Um, I don't know what this is for. I've gone through the instructions and I don't think that there is a hose or a tubing that is going to attach to this right here. So if you do break it, um, it's really not, not a big loss. It's not, it's not a game changer as far as I'm concerned or as far as I know on this build. I don't know what that part is for, but um, uh, when, once the bike is all assembled and you got all the cows on it, you're not going to see it anyway. But uh, I have more or less confirmed that there's nothing that's going to be attached to this piece right there. So if you do break it, it's really not that big of a deal. Uh, it's possible that you can glue those pieces back on again, uh, depending upon how they break. But um, I just wanted to point that out. So that brings us up to uh, step number 27 through to step number 32, where we start working on, whoops, where we start working on the, uh, the, the tires uh, or the front tire. And then we do the, uh, the front fork, work on the, uh, the brakes, the handlebars, and then we finally attach it, everything that we've assembled onto the bike. So I need to get all this uh, assembled, uh, sanded and painted and put on the bike and I can show you what that looks like. I've already started working on the brakes, on the brake discs. Uh, these are the metal discs that are in the detail upset. So I've already started working on that. Uh, just have some more detail work I have to do on the other side. And I've got um, this one also almost uh, completed. I uh, have also put some brake wear on the uh, on the disc itself. Uh, you probably can't see it, but there is a little bit of brake wear on there to simulate the, uh, the bike uh, using its brakes. So uh, let me get all this done and assembled, and we'll come back and uh, show you what all that looks like, and we'll go to the next step. Okay, I wanted to pause on building uh, the, the motorcycle a little bit on the, uh, the forks. I wanted to go over a couple of key things that you... Uh, might want to know that will help you out on assembling the uh, the fender onto the forks. Uh, I am using the detail upset, so this entire fork assembly right here is all metal except for this piece right here, which is plastic. So nothing here is glued in, and that's a benefit because that allows this piece to turn, and that's going to be helpful for you when you're attaching this piece onto the fender. Uh, the way I did it was as that I did one fork at a time. So I first glued in the fork onto this piece here and the configuration it needs to go. There's a hole here and there is a corresponding hole on the opposite side that goes into this piece here. Once that was glued in and secured, I then proceeded to attach the fender onto the fork. And there's two places where the fender has to go. There's one piece here 
that is glued in and that is a long slender piece that has a lug on it that goes into the hole uh, on the fender. And then on the other side, turn this around, right here, there is another um, hole here and a lug. Now this piece here is long and slender and it fits into a groove onto the fender area right in through here. So that fits nice and flush and there's a lug that goes into the hole here. So that's where that's glued in. Once the glue dries, then the fender becomes very secure and allowing you to do the opposite side a lot easier. So I wanted to point that out uh, to you uh, to save you a little bit of frustration in the event that you might be having problems or before you start building to uh, consider how to attach this fender onto the forks. Now there's a couple of uh, places that you need to paint on the fender. There's uh, this piece right here. Don't know if you can see or not right there is painted black it's a little uh, lug i guess there's something that's going to be attached to that later because it's a hole and this right here is a decal i don't know if you can see that a bit of a decal right there okay but uh, that's uh, that's the fork assembly uh, on there so i'm waiting for all that to dry there's a couple of more pieces that need to go on uh, right here uh, these pieces are going to go on a little bit later once the fork assembly has completely dried and then of course there's this piece right here that also needs to go on so once those pieces have been dried I'll go ahead and, and complete that and then we'll be moving on to the next step I have worked on the the brakes and I have uh, put the logo painted the logo on on there and I also did it on the other brake too which is right here it's all painted on and uh, I've also completed the the brake I think I, I'll show this should move this out a little bit more uh, did the uh, the brakes right here and this piece right here had to be glued in on this side of the wheel uh, this uh, this piece right here I'm not going to glue in it just fits nice and tight once it finds its uh, spot Oops, right there so once it finds its spot, it's all nice and locked in. And I'm going to secure this piece in as the wheel is being attached to the fender as it's outlined in the instructions. And then that was going to move us up to the next step here, which is we're going to be doing the, the handlebars. I've already started painting these pieces. I am going to be using the detail upset for all these pieces right here, all are going to be in metal and iodized metal uh, colors. Um, so, but all these other pieces I've got uh, painted and they're in the garage right now waiting to, to dry. I also did this piece right here and in the detail upset, there is a, whoops, there is a metal piece for this, but when you need to attach metal to plastic, you have to use super glue. And I thought that, well, that's going to fog up the clear piece and it's not going to make the, the reflector, uh, look as good. At least uh, that was my, my thought process. So to be on the safe side, I decided uh, not to put the metal uh, screen on top of this piece here. I went ahead and just uh, airbrushed it with uh, some clear yellow, or excuse me, clear orange is what it calls for. Uh, so uh, that's it uh, so far on these pieces. And uh, let me go ahead and get all these uh, parts assembled, uh, put it onto the bike, and then move on to the next step and show you what all that uh, looks like. Okay, we got the front wheel on the forks, went on without any real problem, uh, and we also attached the hoses. Now, what I did on the hoses is that I did not glue them into the lugs here because those lugs are pretty long and the hoses fit very, very snug and tight. I did glue them up on here on these lugs because these lugs here are short, and I just felt that those hoses would probably fall off as I'm working on the bike, so I went ahead and glued those in. So that went in, went in without any real problem. And then started working on the, uh, the handlebar assembly. I uh, got these metal ionized parts uh, glued in and ready to attach to the bike. And the way this is gonna go on is that there is a post right here. And then that post is gonna slip into this hole right there. So we'll put that in there just like this. Goes in that like that. And then you just slip it in. It takes a little bit of wiggling room to get it in there. There it goes. And then you take your handlebar assembly 
And on the back of the handlebar assembly, there's this, this hole right here, which is more like a lug. It's going to slip inside that hole right there. So you take this. It's a little fiddly to get on. But uh, we put that in there like so. That then lines up like that. And then you push up your, your forks up into the recess of the handlebars. Once all that is attached, then you put a long screw here in the center and you then permanently attach the fork to the, to the bike. Now, I also want to point out that a couple of hoses were also installed onto the radiator. Uh, this one long hose here is going to be attached later on to the right handlebar. I think it's the right handlebar this is going to go on to. And then on this hose right here, it's going to go into that one free lug that's on the, the fender for the brake system. Uh, I would recommend gluing the hoses onto those lugs because they are short and those hoses could fall off during construction of the bike. So once all that's on, I'll put all that on, come back, show you what that all looks like. And then that then will bring us up to basically uh, step 34, where we start working on the, uh, the air cleaner box. And then we also start working on the right handlebar. And then uh, we move on to the, uh, the fuel tank and the cows. So let me get this all attached onto the, uh, onto the bike, come back, show you what that all looks like, and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so we have the air cleaner box on the bike, and I went ahead and uh, did a little bit of detail work on the air cleaner I, to just to bring out these uh, conduits that are on the uh, on the air cleaner. I thought that just kind of just made that pop a little bit more. There's a lot of tubing that and wiring that you need to complete in this stage. So uh, let me kind of like go through all that for you so that. Um, you'll know what to expect. Now, the tubing that's been in the, in the engine here for quite some time, that is finally gonna get uh, attached. It runs from the engine in here and attaches to the air cleaner box right there. Then these wires right here, I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit more so you can see this better. There we go, Oop. okay. So these wires right here, they loop around a lug that's underneath this part and they run under here around the fork and they attach themselves to the back of the handlebar right there. Now I recommend do not glue the handlebars onto the bike. Just dry fit them on. Um, it will make your life a lot easier in the long run. Also too, by having the handlebars off the bike, as you're putting the tubing and the wiring on will also make your life a lot easier. So put the tubing and the wires on to the handlebars before you attach it to the bike. Yeah, but trust me, it'll make your life a lot easier if you do that. Okay, now the, the other tube that goes on, on is from this fluid reservoir and it goes right into underneath the fluid reservoir into the handlebar right there. And then the tubing right here that comes from underneath the handlebar right there uh, it comes from the radiator underneath the light so that one tubing that you should have in this area right here actually runs up and into the handlebars so that that tube finally gets connected uh, doing all the tubing uh, on the handlebars and the wires that took me an hour and a half to do so take your time and you'll get it all done but that is the air cleaner onto the bike Okay, so now that brings us, put this over here for a moment. So that brings us here to zoom out uh, just a little bit more uh, to the fuel tank and uh, start working on all the cows. Now the cows, there's a lot of cow work that, that you have to do up and through here and here and all this, all this cow work. These cows get uh, either they're pushed on to a lug or they're screwed on to the bike. For example, the fuel tank is screwed on. Uh, these pieces up here are screwed on. Uh, this piece right here just snaps into the bike. So a lot of these cows either get screwed onto the bike or they get uh, pushed onto a, onto a lug. Um, that's gonna make your life easier because you're gonna have to paint these, mask them off to the different colors that they need to be. Then you're gonna need to put decals on these uh, cows. 
and those decals have to be aligned perfectly so that they uh, run from one decal into the next uh, decal all the way through the bike. And in order to make sure that those decals are all lined up properly is to first put the uh, the cows on the bike, then put the decals on the on. Then once you're satisfied where the decals are, remove the cows and all the parts from the bike. Do your clear coat. Wait for that to dry, and then uh, permanently attach everything to the bike. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to first uh, paint all these to the colors that they need to be painted, and then once all that's done get them dry fitted on the bike, put the decals on, uh, do the clear coat, permanently attach it to the bike. When all that's done, I'll come back, show you what that's all look like, and then we can go on to the next step. Okay, I wanted to show you where I'm at with the, uh, the decals on the bike um, and how I'm putting the decals on. Uh, I've gotten and, and painted all the parts that need to be painted in the colors that are called for in the, in the kit, and then I dry fitted all these parts on. This blue piece, this piece right here is really a blue piece, which is this piece here. Um, before you put the decals on, that's what that piece looks like. It's uh, painted in the metallic blue. And that's screwed on the bike right here. At the same time, it also secures the gas tank. Uh, this piece here is just dry fitted, and this piece here is also dry fitted. Once all those pieces were on the bike, I then proceeded to put the decals on. Now I started off with the gas tank and I put this decal on first and I lined the bottom of the decal. I don't know if you can see this. Maybe I can zoom in just a little bit more. There we go. I positioned the bottom of the decal to line up to the top of the blue piece that would form this red line. That red line is really the, the gas tank. So when you put this decal on and you move it close to the blue piece, you'll see that they'll start to form this, this line. And you want to make that line to go all the way around here, and then it marries into the seam between the gas tank and this piece here. And then it moves all the way to the other side of the bank. Uh, this red line is actually shown in the color brochure of where all the decals go. Once you've got this uh, positioned the way you want it, and you are satisfied with how that red line looks, go ahead and let it dry using Mark Vet Strong, uh, or micro sole or micro set and then once all that's all done and you're all satisfied then I moved on to uh, the blue piece which it consists of a decal of a blue stripe this thin silver stripe this white stripe right here and then there's also this little red stripe let me show you this is the decal that you're going to be putting on right here so it's got this blue it's got this uh, silver blue line here the white and then this red. Now that silver blue line you want to align it up to the silver blue line that's on the gas tank. Okay see if you can actually see that on camera. So this blue line the silver blue line marries up to the silver blue line that's on this blue piece here. Once you've got this lined up this whole entire decal just flows into place. And then uh, use your uh, decal solutions whatever it is that you're using. Uh, Tammy Mark Fit Strong or the Microsol Micro Set, whatever it is that you're using, let the decal dry thoroughly. And then there's another decal, it's a red one that goes on that blue piece, which is this red decal here. Now you'll notice that there's already a red stripe on that decal that you put onto the blue piece. If you don't marry this up properly to this, you're going to see a seam between this decal and this decal. So what I did was, is I took the top edge of this red decal and I lined it up to the top edge of this red stripe. Once I did that, this whole entire decal then fell into the proper position, as you can see there. Okay, uh, there's a lot of dips and turns on that blue piece, so it took a lot of, uh, well, I'm using Tammy and Mark Fit Strong, uh, to soften that decal so that it fell uh, properly in the curvature of that blue piece. And then once that was dry, then then moved on to the uh, to the next, which is this uh, uh, red, uh, I guess, I don't know what you call it, for the, the back area here, on uh, this red piece. And you'll notice that it's got a blue stripe that runs from up here all the way around, and it ends down here. Now it marries into the top point of this blue piece. So when you put this decal on, you want to make sure that the top tip 
of this decal here that goes on the back wing. I'm going to call it the back wing uh, or whatever this is called. You want to make sure that the top edge of this blue decal ends up with the top part of this uh, decal for the uh, blue piece. And once you've done that, this entire decal then flows into the proper position on this uh, wing area. And uh, the way that it applied for me and where I'm going to keep it is this, it flows just below the edge of that plastic part right there. And you'll notice in the color brochure that there is a red line that runs all the way up through there and then up and in, up into this area here. So um, it fell right into the position where I wanted it. And, um, and then once that's all dry, which it's actually dry now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove all these, all these parts once I get the other side done. And uh, after I put the decals and paint this area here that requires it, that's called for in the kit, um, give it a couple of uh, layers of Tamiya Clear. I'm not using the spray can. I'm using the Tamiya Clear. And I'm going to airbrush all that uh, clear on top to protect the decals and to give it that extra shine and also to give it the illusion that those decals are actually uh, painted on the bike. So uh, I'm going to get all that done, come back, show you what it all looks like, and then after that we can move on to the next step. Okay, the uh, build is done, the model is complete. Uh, the entire kit went in just fine, didn't really have too much problems in building it. Uh, the suggestion to put the decals on after they're on the bike is a really good suggestion. Uh, it will help you to line those decals up correctly. Uh, but um, other than that, um, really no real big problems in uh, building this. I think it's a, a kind of a complicated bike only because of the decals. That was the only uh, real frustration that I had in building it. But everything else just went in just fine. Uh, used the detail upset. I'll put some uh, photos up on the screen here to give you some more uh, detailed look at the bike and how well it came out. I'm really, really pleased the way this came out. Uh, the license plate assembly is all done in the uh, detail upset. So the license plate, the uh, rivets that hold the license plate in, and those uh, reflectors are all from the detail upset. So they're all done in metal. And I'll put a picture up on the screen here to show you how that was done. Uh, but um, everything just went in just fine. So yeah, this is a pretty good uh, model to start off with. If you're, a, if you're an intermediate to an advanced modeler, you shouldn't have any problems in building this. So that's it. I um, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed, please remember to subscribe. Other than that, have a great day. Always have fun in your garage, your workshop, or wherever it is that you build your models. And until next time, we'll see you later.